Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly Unreal Engine Twitch live stream. Uh, I'm Chance Ivey, your community manager. Today I've got some of our awesome community members here with us. We've got Tom Lumen, uh, Osman Chardeval, and uh, James Caulfield, as known as Xenome. Uh, we're going to talk over some things that just UE4 in general, talk about making games, look over some cool projects people are working on, people that, things people have worked on. Uh, so yeah, it'll be a fun one. Really glad to have you guys here. So uh, first mm -hmm. we're going to hop into the news. Shelly, if you can. Thanks. So Marketplace release. Each week we try to get Marketplace content out to you guys, and uh, this week is no different than the rest. Uh, should note that this is the last one that we'll actually do for this year since we're going on break, but um, let's roll down and see kind of what we got available for you guys. So we got Photo Real Rocks by Barry Lowndes, Modular Sci-Fi Hallways by Jonathan Frederick, Procedural Apartments by Ammo Box Studios. That's a really cool one too, because that's built in blueprints and you, you drag the building and it actually creates the windows for you. Oh and nice. it's, it, it scales and, and shapes everything. You can randomize what's in them and stuff. So really cool to build, um, build out a city pretty quickly. There's a Zombie One Model and Animation Pack by T-Pose Incorporated. Clever name. <laughs> uh, material Pack, there's more substance algorithmic stuff. We got Bitmap to Material 3 Pro. And Necro's Utility Pack by Jacob Bowers. Audio, we've got Horror Music Pack by Stephen Liu. So those are available for you to go and snag today from Marketplace and use in your games. So last week we went over the new preview build system and a little bit of, uh, I guess, not really a ton of detail uh, as we were still trying to nail down a lot of what those were. Uh, Ray Davis wrote a really great blog on it that kind of outlines the process. So it's up right now at unrealengine.com slash blog. You can read the full details there. But this kind of outlines some of the things we talked about yesterday about getting preview builds out to you guys a little earlier uh, so we, we can have some iteration time in between uh, versions, say for instance 4.6 and 4.7. We can have multiple previews in between that actually track issues that you guys find, that we find, and you can kind of see how the progress is moving in between the versions themselves. So, um, Big important note here too, previews before were mostly baked down uh, and they were safe for the most part uh, when considering <coughs> comparing them to the actual full release. The new previews are probably going to be pretty broken up front because they're uh, just a couple days after you know we, we branch out and start working on things. So. They're, uh, they're tested, but they're not like fully bulletproof tested, so you're going to find some bugs there. Uh, we do encourage you, though, to hop in there and, 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 and check them out um, when you can. And I want to call out uh, new training videos we got up here by Wes Bunn. There's a Blueprint Time Attack tutorial that he's created. It's, it's up on our blog as well. And to our documents, there's a full playlist that goes from a fresh project all the way through how to set up you know, a, a best time uh, I guess racing mechanic for a, a racing game and it, it's pretty cool so go check it out if that's something you <coughs> might be interested in. And that's all we got for the news on to Community Spotlight. So this week is Game Jam week. We had um, gosh 41 submissions uh, from, <laughs> the from the December Jam which is just awesome. Really really great really great to get all those in. We had you know 21 and 25 and, and October and November, and so 41, like me and Alexander's team and, and those guys have just been scrambling, getting them, getting them all played, getting them all, you know, uh, all rated, and then videos and stuff cut. So really, really cool stuff in here. Um, worth noting in the future, we may kick the, re the actual review cycle back an entire week, so we have time to actually spend, a as these things grow, we have time to spend with each individual game um, more and, and, and work through those and, and, and really, really make this something awesome. So really, really great stuff from uh, What's in the Box. And uh, we are going to, let's see, get to the video right now. Hope this opens the right one. <coughs> and awesome. So yeah, the video is even twice as long as before too since we're still doing the same amount of segments, but uh, it's about four and a half, so. Jet Santa. I really love this dude with his shovel. <laughs> Packing gifts on an assembly line, or just throwing toy soldiers. <laughs> yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. yeah. That, one, that game felt really good, like rolling around as a ball. Of 
Oh, you're solid. <laughs> <laughs> I love the little flaps on the box. They just kind of bounce around. <laughs> the chat. That game is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Very shiny. He's emissive. Emissive blue guy. What's in the box? Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Those are scary monster presents. How's that look for you? That's super great. This nice, nice angle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <coughs> Seems to strike. I like how they had Epic T shirt as one of the things that was in the slot to it. <laughs> Play the objective, best team name. <laughs> I know, team Ultimate's pretty great too. Yeah, it's funny. Um, Aller from our community, actually, the night that these all got submitted, spent uh, hours and hours and hours and hours playing them all on his Twitch stream wow. and just commenting on them. We were up until like 2, 3 in the morning until I finally passed out, and, <laughs> and he uh, he was still going. It was hilarious. This one looks fun. Yeah. That looks good. I, lo I love <laughs> the, the arrow arms. That was just perfect. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah, it's a Minecraft game. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's good. And more of diet. Busted <laughs> penguin. <laughs> This is super cool right here. You can see, no seven reference so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Surprising, yeah. Very. The compression adds a bit extra creepiness to that one. Yeah, <laughs> it does. So awesome work! <coughs> excellent, uh, excellent job, everybody. We were really, really impressed with with the games that came across, and we hope to see some of you guys turn those into you know full-on projects. That'd be super cool. So keep up the awesome, awesome work. And now on to the top three. So a number of us in the teams played through these, and uh, these are the ones that we, we dubbed as the, the top submissions based on um, overall fun factor, unique use of theme, and, um, and overall visuals. So first up on that list is this. a game called Fold. So Fold is done by a team called Aussie and Boli. And it's a really, really cool puzzle game that uh, requires you to unfold a box and then move your player token to a goal. So you kind of see this box right here. This is like the tutorial intro level. <coughs> and you can just kind of fold it off or fold it open using these little uh, widgets that show, you know, which way it's going to rotate. And this little, it's interesting. I'm not really sure what I am as a light source or. <laughs> But you mm -hmm. use that little man there to walk and find the goal. So really, really excellent, simple mechanic, but but really, really awesome work. Play through this guy too here. Let's see, yeah, come on down in here, and let's see if I can if I can navigate back up. There we go. 
still learning the controls, clearly. My guy's got to get up to that goal. This puzzle got me quite a bit. I mean, we were playing this before the stream, and I was yeah. like, I can't remember how I solved it. <laughs> There's quite a few steps oh. there. Oh, gosh, I almost got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come back. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm the oh, worst. Oh, you're killing him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my left and right clicks mixed oh, up. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, this one's a little bit more difficult. We'll we'll hop on to the next real quick, but <laughs> really, really great, great job team. Uh, really awesome work there. So next one we got up is <laughs> one that I just couldn't I couldn't play without his laughing the whole time. Um, this is great. This is <laughs> what's in the box by Team Gulp, <coughs> and like the minute I booted it up, I was just like, oh. There I am. <laughs> There's a little gingerbread dude. <laughs> and so you're this guy, and you're trying to open these presents and save your buddies while trying to hide from this Grinch character. He's a lot creepier than any Grinch I've ever seen. First time I saw him, it, it scared me pretty good. So let's see what we got here. Make sure life is safe. And I'm going to open that box. Can't, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh there he is. Oh, life is the worst. <laughs> oh, I've been caught. Yep, that is nightmare inducing. That is fuel. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what we got over here. That run cycle is perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a little, it's so bouncy and. Bouncy, bouncy. Boom, boom. Yeah, I want really whimsical music with this. No, oh, see, he's protecting those. I gotta save my gingerbread dudes. It's like the cute slender man. Oh man, the slender bread man. Is that is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude. All right, hurry, let's go get saved. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, those are. It. Oh cool, I'll take those. Oh, those make me run fast. That's right. Yeah, so if I get the candies, I can run quicker. Just abandon your. Did I lose? Did I lose them? No. Come on, come on, little buddies. Let's save these guys. <laughs> and turn them in and score. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one more time with that nightmare fuel. All right. So really great job there. A lot of fun in that game. And the third one that we've got here is. See we got. This game is bombs in boxes, so it is essentially a complete game of uh, Minesweeper. Yet it's done in third person, or, or sorry, first person, 3D. So you've got all these little gifts here, and you're trying to figure out if each of them is going to be a bomb or nothing. So uh, yeah, super cool stuff. We've We've all played Minesweeper, I'm sure, but yeah, there's little funsies inside there. Yay! I feel really good about that. My prize number is going high. Alright, so let's see. I don't know. Cool. Two on that. Let's see, there's two there. So. Let's see. Tag that guy. Two more over here. One thing that's interesting to me, too, is. Um, you can actually find a bomb and you don't lose immediately. You just get blown up in the face. Damage player and it tells me where. If you have lives? Or? Yeah, you get three lives, which is an interesting thing. I've never played Minesweeper before where you actually, it's, it's okay to make a mistake. I mean, normally when I'm clearing bombs from a building, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, you, don't, you don't really get a whole lot of... Uh, <laughs> one mistake is all yeah. it takes. One mistake is one too many. I'm just going to guess. Yeah, see? But no, this guy, he, we are living and breathing. So, I, I can't jump. That'd be super cool if I could jump over that. Walk around here. 
I'm just kind of lazy. I'm just going to shoot in the dark now, so. Hopefully I don't die again. And three. Oh, okay, cool. But I'm still alive, because LOL video games. <laughs> and I got, nope, that's not a bomb. So yes. That is two. You are good. You, not you. Oh, wait. Is that? Did I win? Did I win something? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you sound surprised. Two. Not one. I'm so close. I like that the bombs number is going up. I guess that's my my score in contrast to. You. I like how the debug text is still there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe it's code for something. I don't know. So that was a bomb there. So it's weird. Oh oh gosh. No no. Ah. Still five boxes. I lost. So close. <laughs> Sorry for yelling into the mic, Shelly. All right, so awesome, awesome work. Really, really great stuff. Um, so yeah, just a reminder, all participants are getting a 30-day uh, code to continue making awesome games in Unreal Engine. And those top three submissions will re be receiving three 30-day codes, as well as um, a special Game Jam t-shirt, which we're still designing and printing. I know I said that last time we had a Game Jam too, but we'll hopefully have those ready for you guys in the new year. And don't worry, we haven't forgot about you guys uh, from the October, November jam. Um, we're just we're trying to get our, everything done on the production side for that. So, watch out for that. It'll happen uh, sometime early next year. So, thanks a lot. We're going to be probably kicking off the next January jam, I guess, in sometime early January, maybe the first. Yeah, probably the first week. So, <coughs> watch out for that. All right. With that, we're uh, going to move on to the good stuff. We got uh, these guys here going to talk over some things that they're working on. Um, let's take a look at some things they have worked on. We're just going to. Chat it up, so I'm going to flip it over to Tom here, and he's going to show us some things he's got going on. Yes. Yeah, All right. I think he got you here. <laughs> Wait. Not there. It was another window. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll let you go. I, I'll <laughs> find it somewhere. So <coughs> Mitch and I have been working on a game called Switch, and it's a multiplayer. I think it's the first one you got there. Yep. Multiplayer first-person shooter. And uh, last week we made a we did a play test with a couple of friends, and uh, it went pretty well. We got a lot of feedback, a lot of stuff we didn't didn't get in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd like to show you guys what we what we have so far. Yeah, so we've been following <coughs> Switch for you know a few months now and watching the the progression of it. It's it's looking really cool. Like the basics of it here are that you base you can basically create your environment, right, as you as you move around it. Yes, exactly. So you can use it as floors to walk around, uh, or you can use it as cover or block a projectile. So imagine you, you would have a grenade, and if someone throws a grenade at you, you just switch a wall in between you guys, <laughs> and you just bounce it back up. <laughs> That's so awesome. At the guy who throw it. And this was your this was your multiplayer playtest that you had, what was it, last week, two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, it was Saturday or Sunday. Saturday. I don't remember, because we were just working 14 hours a day, so... <laughs> How many people do we have on the test? Uh, what you can see on the left was about six six people on the server. Right. So you're doing 3v3? Uh, yeah, well, we were testing a, a, a new game game type okay. called uh, Switch Deathmatch, which is um, so a player would get marked uh, and everyone will see him uh, in, his, in his hut. Okay. And as soon as that guy get kill gets killed, he will be in your team. And everyone starts oh. out uh, in his own team. Oh so wow! Okay, so, every so you sort of build up build up a team as you play, <coughs> and if you if you get killed, you join the other guys. Uh, Interesting. Team. Mm -hmm. And so you you can win by having the l the largest team, but you could still win as as a, s a single player by being the MVP. But for example, if you killed the most marked players, or yeah. if you maybe uh, the last guy standing. Yeah, yeah. And you can still you know keep on keep on killing unmarked guys and get points for everything you do basically. So you can win as a team and as an individual. Yeah, that's awesome. So with that, like, I'm wondering, so say, like, you die and you're on somebody else's team, and then I kill you, do you come to my team, or are you just... If, just part uh, of if that player will be marked, then yes. Uh, okay, oh, but got it, got it, If got it's it. an armor player, you can just defend yourself, uh, okay. but you won't, yeah. you won't, you won't, you won't gain him as a... Yeah. Got it. Cool. So how, how did you come up with this idea, like, to, to build this? Were you just... Well... We have a long history, and it started out as a first-person puzzle game. Okay. So it was completely different. Uh, and we had a space station, and we had all kind of s kinds of really detailed meshes. And, and uh, at one point, we decided, well, puzzles are hard. 
<laughs> we need to make a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, so we, yeah, we made the switch and we, uh, we've, uh, we've been building a, a, a prototype that we can uh, sort of uh, get people interested and in yeah. see if we can find, you know, animators or uh, other people interested in the game. Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned first person puzzle and how puzzle games are hard. It's a conversation that came up between the four of us earlier. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, sometimes getting your game built is the easy part, and then like designing it is like yeah. the the gigantic challenge, right? Yeah, level design, uh, etc. Definitely puzzle levels. Uh, you also don't know how difficult a puzzle is, yeah. Because you know the solution, right? <coughs> but you know, you have no idea should this be level two or the last level. <laughs> it's complexity. That's goes. super cool. Um, so yeah, how long have you been working on it? Um, well, in Unreal Four, we've been working on it since since Unreal beta came out or since the launch of Unreal okay. Engine 4 but the game itself has been in development for uh, quite a while before but we, we've been constantly been changing the design as I said we, we started out as, as a puzzle game so yeah. all the work we did at the time is just completely yeah it's on, it's on <laughs> Mitch's hard drive right now but it's yeah. it will never be seen and by it's anyone. And it's just you and Mitch. Yeah it's just me and Mitch and so Mitch is uh, doing the um, all the game design, level design and 3D art Okay. and I do the uh, game design and uh, programming and uh, shader stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen a lot of your shader work. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of these guys have too, like come across your website or you know Twitter yeah. and things like that. D yeah, playing with shaders is a lot of fun. Yeah. Especially if you have a visual editor, you can just tweak values and you get all these crazy results. Yeah, and you've got a lot of, lo lot of those up, like just uh, examples that up at TomLuman.com, right, like in your site? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Man, that's great. And hey, so what we don't have any, well, what we didn't have any, any built, but that we want to get in for the next one, for example, is stuff like rocket launchers. But instead of them having them deal damage, they will just switch back the environment that you created. So this is a very old build, but oh yeah. it showed the rocket launcher. Yeah. And um, so you can just see the guy falling as we just switched away his, uh, his platform that he just built <coughs> while he was engaging the other player. Yeah, yeah, I love so that dissolve effect too. It's watching it come in and then go back out. Yeah. And uh, so another, another thing that we want to get in is like this X-ray where as once you switched like a wall or a piece of, uh, of a floor, you, can s you and your team can still see through it. So <coughs> you can still see the yeah. outlines of other players. Gotcha. So you don't block your entire view right. because then you are still at a dis disadvantage basically. Right, so you build the wall and then it includes everything you see. And then it's like, what does that actually mean for you, right? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And... Uh, yeah, we have a lot of other cool, st cool stuff that we, that we would like to integrate, you know, like having uh, eye tracking. Uh, we got approached by uh, Toby, who are uh, developing iX, which is like an eye tracking device. Okay, and yeah, yeah. And we, uh, we want to get that in. And for example, if you are uh, engaging with someone in combat, you can just look down at a floor and you can switch it using your eyes oh instead wow. of having to uh, aim down and switch a floor then. And this is the eye tracking plugin that we've seen like kind of roll across the forums or different yeah, other online exactly. sites that's too. That's the, same yeah. one. that's the same one. And so we have a lot of applications for that. We want to be able to with your eyes, mark players, uh, pro grenades, uh, all of that stuff should be uh, should be really cool. Or and, and for example, if we have the rocket launcher and we make it a homing missile, you can just home your missile using your eyes instead of having to uh, uh, use your cursor, for example. That's awesome. Um, any plans on any public play tests or anything anytime soon? Uh, I think it would be really cool if we can get the community involved. I mean, on the forums, we've heard a lot of people uh, asking, yeah. hey, when well, can we play test? Uh, so far, we've only had internal play tests because it's unless you have like a good <laughs> launcher or a good uh, like pipeline setup, it right. it's gets difficult a really to get, difficult yeah. to get everyone approached through Skype or something. Hey, here we have this Google Drive link that you can, can, can use. Mm -hmm. and you know, it's going to be a lot of issues, but once we get that sorted out, it would be really awesome to get that yeah, community involved. Yeah, totally. Well, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Anyway, we've been talking about it back and forth for a little bit yeah. to see it, but super cool. And um, yeah, so you said you worked on it before before UE4 beta. What was the transition like? Was it difficult or? Well, before it was built in UDK. Okay. So we were using Unreal, uh, Unreal Script. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the material editor hasn't really changed between the two versions, yeah. so it was like really simple. A lot of easy analogs. Yeah, there, I think yeah. we could even copy paste it between the, the two. Oh wow. I'm <laughs> not even sure. But, uh, but Unreal Script, I mean, getting to uh, C++ from C Sharp, that that takes some getting used to, but it was it was okay. But especially Blueprint, you know, uh, Blueprints are like super easy to get get yeah. into. If you just if you need something, you can just start typing the word in English, and you you can s you will probably get the correct note for it. You get close enough, yeah. It's and even on the palette, like if there's one you I just want to look up, 
I do this a lot, just transform. Just so type in transform, give me everything yep. that we can do with transforms, and I'll find the one that actually works yeah. the best for me. Uh, yeah, so, so the transition was actually quite easy, and a lot of things were m way more difficult to do in neural script than we than is yeah. it is now. It's more much more direct, especially just blueprints is basically just creating prefabs, and that, that is something that we were missing in Unique. Yeah, uh, to a attach the logic to our modeling setup and right. having these grids. I mean, this grid is like one huge. Well, it's it's one blueprint, and it's all very context ses sensitive. Gotcha. It sort of knows about uh, floors and about what's around it. So it knows uh, a pillar would know about the floors uh, on top of it and the floors underneath, for example, and mm -hmm. it would know about the walls, etc. So if you were to switch away a pillar, it would know that it has to switch away the floors as well. Gotcha. That's awesome. And so are you, are you driving a lot of this with blueprints? Uh, yeah, in this case, the most of the switching stuff is in blueprints, but uh, the rest of the game, everything is uh, C++. Awesome. Cool. Super awesome. And and did you did you use a lot of the shooter game parts for this or? Uh, well, in the in the old video, so this is this Jeff is a really old one. Yeah. But in the in the new playtest, we uh, started fra from from zero again. So okay. we basically opened the, uh, just a clean project. We got the weapon pack from Marketplace. We got mm -hmm. a character from Marketplace. Uh, yeah. Animations, all that, and then we just uh, used ga a shooter game as a reference. Um, to kind of put out so your architecture of how yeah yeah and like going. weapon code how how would you replicate yeah. that stuff uh, but uh, yeah so it, shooter game is a, has been a big reference for us but it has been built from from the ground up awesome 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 well cool um, anything else on Switch uh, well maybe later but okay, uh, cool. I'll, I'll turn <laughs> yeah, it yeah, to, uh, to sure. Osman oh Osman also I just saw didn't you put up like the the reticle the the yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. put it on so the yeah, yeah that's content, the one yeah. in the use in the video but okay, I didn't awesome. know how yeah, to yeah. use it so there's like five <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. awesome cool so I, I I just remembered that I was like oh, I just saw that when I was watching yeah, this it's it's like oh, yeah, I think one, he yeah. built that yeah yeah cool yeah me and Tom just share every now and then like small snippets and everything. yeah so we just, you just throw like each other just yeah, throw it over the fence the other guys like hey you might want this exactly yeah that's awesome so yeah well actually so I've been making a game. In Unreal Engine. Let me show the video first. Cool. It's so called Gundorf, right? Yeah. yeah, it's called Gundorf. It's actually, oh it wasn't supposed to be a real game, it's just like a playground for me to test all the new features. Mm -hmm. So, like, didn't release in Unreal Engine. So, the first thing that I wanted to do is, like, if I'm going to work on this game, it has to be fun. So, I just wanted a shooter because most people like shooters. Yeah. And the characters are like that because I'm not a character artist. So I just took the Mixemo, I think it was a goblin. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a goblin. So I just cut his head off and removed his <laughs> body. Just cut the I goblin's head off. Yeah. Yeah. Deal. So <laughs> made him tiny because that was easier to animate. Because the uh, limbs are like the one animation uh, yeah. cycles are very hard. But I just have to like move the feet a little bit. But the style <laughs> is awesome because of it. Yeah. But yeah. It, it worked. So I'm I mean, headshots are a lot easier because the head is. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to think I have to balance that because everything is a headshot now. Yeah. But I do want to have a difference between headshot and body. Maybe the old Zelda thing where there's like the hot spot, you know? Yeah. Like it's a little Probably different. Something but, like <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's actually done completely from scratch with uh, Unreal Tournament code and the shooter game open in the same window just to, like Tom, just take reference from it. Yeah. And learn to see how to do replication and like the late in a later nice. video I also had like uh, yeah, when exactly. UNG first came out, mm -hmm. started doing a server browser and everything. And I think uh, Ray Davis, uh, he really liked that one. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool to yeah, see a tweet. From yeah, him. awesome yeah. stuff. And uh, so that was nice. And just like Tom, I'm also probably going to share that with him as well. <laughs> I built uh, a whole pipeline to actually test the game as well. So I have a server running on uh, Amazon. Oh wow! And a front end that just has you one button, play. It will update the game for you, and it will just sh uh, the server browser in game, of course. But we also have like an external yeah, server, server browser as well. So I'm actually been working on all aspects to learn Unreal Engine and just yeah. game development overall. Awesome. Oh. And uh, yeah, recently I, I was just watching it. It looks like so. <laughs> that feels so good. The zoom in, like every time I see that, I'm like, man, that feels good. Actually, I'm not sure if the sound works, but. Uh, oh like the th most people like love the sound. Like yeah. it feels yeah, really powerful. Strong. The rifle, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I also had the hit sounds and everything, in it. <laughs> <laughs> and ragdolls like, <laughs> ragdolls like that are right important. there. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, which I'm still okay. working on this, but uh, I'm trying to uh, practice a bit oh the art oh. side because I, I don't want to be too far ahead with the code and design, and then the art still have like is ugly. So I'm just working a little bit on that. Yeah, th this isn't final art. <laughs> <laughs> close. It's very close. So lately, I've been trying 
substance designer and painter. Oh yeah. And just making high poly meshes and just seeing how the transition goes from painter to Unreal, which is just almost perfect. You, o you only have to turn off sRGB for your roughness and metallic maps. Yeah. And it's identical. This is actually a floor for Tom again, so <laughs> we're sharing <laughs> stuff. I hope he uses it soon. But, uh, but yeah. So hopefully awesome. Gun Dwarf will start to look like this, but then cartoony, of course, stylized. Yeah, uh, that's that's great. Yeah, th th this one the gun is the same. <laughs> It's funny, those ones are a lot longer than the ones I saw in <laughs> yeah. No, this is just for it's just something random to see what the whole pipeline is from getting yeah. something from ZBrush to Maya and then making a low poly and texturing in, in a Substance Painter and then getting it into Unreal Engine. Cool. Yeah, so sure. uh, w with that too, like what is your what is your workflow? Like what is your pipeline currently? Yeah, like I'm okay with switching from program to program, but I mm. try to keep it minimized. So I hope to be able to do most of my work in uh, ZBrush. Okay. So like even sketching and everything. I just use these first and everything to just get the overall shapes. High poly, of course. Low poly, I sti still have to go to Maya because that's my base. That's what yeah, yeah. kind of knocks it down for and you. And same with UVs. Uh, Retopologizing, I, I actually s tried Modo for that and it felt much better than Maya, but I think in the new Maya, I haven't tried it yet, they, they also have, they, they updated their topology tools. But yeah, I haven't tried it yet. I hope to not have to switch for topology yeah. as well. To another yeah, software. yeah. That's and awesome. And uh, yeah, the textures are now done in uh, Substance Painter. I hope to never open Photoshop for text again, just to prepare some stencils <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. some noises and some grunge maps. But yeah, working in Substance Painter is really nice, especially because it's really, really synced with mm -hmm. Unreal Engine. And uh, yeah. Yeah, is, is it this is an engine here? This is an Unreal Engine, yeah. Yeah, cool. I think I had shots of it in Substance Designer, but maybe I'll show that later. I don't have. Yeah, I just like I love that it you know helps you maximize the the PBR renderer, right? Yeah, like, or it's, uh, PBR render is a little um, redundant, but <laughs> 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 the physically based rendering inside yeah. the engine. So super That's cool. Yeah, and, and the floor is just one hundred percent in Designer, and brought into uh, Unreal Engine, just something basic to show off the real time screen space. Uh, yeah, sections. Well, that's great, man. Uh, um, works. What's up? That uh, works well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should. Uh, you should have Xenom do some of your, your art, your art <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> sure. Throw something over the fence. Yeah. yeah. Everybody here is just like <laughs> working on each other's projects. Awesome. That will end up a really strange product, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but that looks yeah, good. Cool. Yeah. So that's uh, what I've been doing. Yeah. A anything else you've been working on lately, like? Well, I usually get r really excited with the new experimental features. Yeah. Just today, like we talked about the EQS uh, system, so I'm probably yeah. going to build something for that soon. Yeah, EQS is a. Uh, gosh, that's that's uh, AI and animation are the two things for me that are like the most separate from my skill set. You yeah. know, like I, I understand a, a lot of everything else pretty well. Yeah. Um, EQS seems to be a tool that can really make that my life a lot easier yeah. when when trying to just set up some behavior or some more complex behavior and like think yeah. here are the things I want to do and then take those words and then turn them into actual. It's much easier to tweak as well. So if you want your AI to not see certain parts of the map yeah. or like detect hot spots, like try to run away from the sun or something, you can just tweak it visually. That's You can maybe come up with a game design that you didn't even think of when you were just yeah. thinking about the game itself. It Only while tool opens that up for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. That's interesting. I never thought about that way. That's th that's the cool part about having your software interactive and like yeah. having the iteration times be really really nice mm -hmm. like short like that's why I love painting now because I don't want to think oh I want a seam in there and then go have to go back and create a seam no I just paint it and it's there and it's like yeah so you yeah. can see oh no that seam was a mistake I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I man that's 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 where I fall apart as mentioned earlier too <laughs> it's like texturing is just Oh man, I'm bad. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's <Try> comical. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to check that out. Definitely. Well, cool. Um, but yeah, and so uh, James, you built uh, yeah. the advanced vehicle template for us, right? Right. That was so a while ago by now. Um, yeah. Yeah. But one of many awesome things you've you've been working on. I only do awesome things. Well, yeah, clearly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> except for those that aren't. Uh, <laughs> that's most of them. Um, that's awesome. Right. Um, I was going to make sort of a small walkthrough, but uh, you got another. There's another tab. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah. Uh, I could take no, not I that one. I'll take this one. There you go. On the left. On the left. Yep. This one. All oh right. There Ta -da. it is. Ta-da! 
And uh, uh, those of you who are interested in the vehicle things have probably already tried this. Um, uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about uh, various things that may be related to the physics properties and so on. Uh, but if we look uh, only at the um, animation part of it and the rigging, which is perhaps uh, the most interesting bit, uh, I'd like to recommend that you check out this uh, documentation that's uh, available. If you just check the Learn tab and go to the official documentation, and then you can find some good stuff about the making of this and perhaps the like this I can spell I can spell <laughs> I can't spell <laughs> I fail at spelling it's um, the keyboard uh, okay <laughs> let's blame the keyboard yep. right right um, and there you have it and um, perhaps um, what you want to uh, look at is the starting bit because this is more about uh, the, the general approach to problem solving, perhaps. So if you forget the, the vehicle part of it and just think about um, how you would do something like this. Because when I first posted my um, uh, initial videos on the vehicle, um, there were a lot of people asking me how how this was done in the first place because uh, the standard vehicle doesn't work anywhere near this of course when looking at the suspension and things like that uh, but if you're looking through this you can find out basically the, the whole process of how to arrive at a working solution and uh, well I mean, it's straightforward. You look at what you have, and what you have is this, basically. If you <laughs> 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 yeah. try the, the standard vehicle, that's what you get, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, it's, it's interesting how someone, like he made the documentation, but how did you know all of this? Like, that's really yeah. did you just start to mess about yeah, with the settings? Um, yeah. How, how did, yeah, how did you get here? Yeah. How <laughs> did I get here? Uh, well, that's pretty basic. You know, you uh, started the standard vehicle template, and uh, this is what I found. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's there. <laughs> nice. uh, so uh, it's just a series of logical steps from that point, right? Uh, you have this, uh, and what do you want? Well, you want this. So how do you get from A to B? Nice. That's, hmm. that's the question, right? Um, and um, uh, uh, the key thing, I think I've outlined that in the text as well. But the key thing is that uh, there is no connection really between the simulated wheel and the mesh, hmm. right? Okay. Uh, the simulated wheel in, in the, 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 the standard physics setup is just a point. Uh, you can set uh, the width and the radius of the wheel, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to exist as a mesh. It's just a point. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. So it's that, that fake glue uh, that we yeah, fill the all the cracks of our exactly video games and Exactly. Uh, and <laughs> that's actually a thing you can use when you encounter fake glue. It's <laughs> uh, <is> that you... <laughs> You take that glue and make the best of it. And yeah. uh, in this case, it's just a matter of how do I go from this vertically moving point and make something else? Um, and uh, it's just a chain of bones. So the suspension, okay. arms, if you take your own arm you and try to point at different directions, you will end up with a circle, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and the only thing we have to look at is the simulated point from the, uh, the physics we vehicle setup. So, of course, you have your lower arm on the suspension looking at that point. Right. It's the only possible way forward. Gotcha. Uh, so it's just following between those two vector. Yeah, locations. you have that. Yeah, some something stuck uh, on a pivot, and and it can look to find the point. 
Um, and that's just using the standard um, the standard uh, tools we have available in the uh, okay, animation cool. blueprint. Just using look at. Yeah, huh. so it's just look at. Nice. Right? Uh, so that's the first part of, of the chain. Have your lower arm look at the point. Um, and then you can move ahead from that uh, line of reasoning and apply the same principle to everything else. You have another arm a bit up. So it would have to look at some other point. It can't look at the same point, of course, because <laughs> then they would go like this, right? Right. Uh, so cross-eyed, if uh, you will. Cross-eyed <laughs> suspension. That <laughs> could be a thing for oh. Detroit. <laughs> <I think. laughs> cross-eyed suspension. So um, what you get to that uh, that point, then you, you obviously need another point you can look at instead. and. Um, Obviously, that has to be something that's above the original physics point. So you have to parent something to that arm, or vice versa, really. Um, and that's the way you do it. Uh, and my point here is that, uh, sure, this is about vehicles, but really any type of technical rigging, if you want to call it that, as opposed to organic rigging for characters yeah. and stuff like that but as long as it's technical mechanical stuff mechanical right yeah <coughs> uh, you almost always end up with these sort of chains of very very simple things you just have to put them in the it's right almost like as if you were going to build it like a little erector set or something on your table like yeah. how you would assemble it it's the exact same way yeah. you would approach it here yeah. exactly yeah. It, it's like any development you divide and conquer, right? Yeah. So <laughs> you have this big thing, I have no idea how to do it, so I'll chop it in half. <laughs> Can I do <laughs> it there, now? Right. Ah, I can't uh, chop that in half <laughs> again. Yeah. And eventually you have uh, this small bit. That, yeah, that's, I that's can fix that. That's how I approach debugging. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Cut half the right. code out and know that it's not going to work. Okay, start Exactly. <laughs> so, um, oh, th that's basically it. So, um, whether you like the advanced physic, uh, uh, the advanced vehicle template or not, I know some have issues with it. Uh, but regardless, so um, it's um, it's a good approach, I think, to general problem solving in mechanical rigging. Simply put, so yeah. so check this out. Uh, <laughs> box if you haven't. Already. Yeah, definitely lots of good stuff in there. How long have you been doing this kind of stuff? Um, I mean, your, your title on here is Random Geek. but <laughs> <it like> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I started programming uh, in 1981 oh, okay. on a Commodore VIC-20. Oh. Back in the days when you uh, wrote machine code by poking 8-bit uh, values. I didn't write machine code poking 8-bit values. You did? I wasn't there. <laughs> 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 uh, so... Um, um, and uh, back then it was ma mainly just programming, but yeah. uh, then I did that on and off on different platforms. And um, about 1999, I got into 3D modeling yeah. on Blender back then. Blender uh, in 1999? Yeah, know. it was very early days. Yeah, I didn't know about Blender until like the mid-2000s. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, and uh, it was really primitive <laughs> <laughs> back then, <laughs> but it worked. And uh, then I switched to Cinema 4D. But anyway, um, and now on Maya. But most of the time, I've ended up doing these sort of technical conundrums, like solving. You just ended up in situations you had to solve them. Yeah, so I, it's sort of interesting <laughs> <laughs> most <laughs> of the time. Yeah, uh, might have to do with uh, genetics, I think. Oh, <laughs> my my, uh, my grandfather was a robotics designer. Oh wow! So uh, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so maybe I inherited some. You picked up on <laughs> here yeah. and there. Some problems, uh, sort of inherited from that. So um, that basically covers it. Cool. I think. Yeah, we were talking earlier. You're, you are primarily an artist now, right? Yeah. Working yeah. in. We were talking about the art workflow earlier. Uh, right. Yeah. Mostly, uh, mostly <laughs> a Maya guy now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it's uh, that's uh, what suits me best. 
it's a personal thing, of course. But yeah. then, in in bigger context, you you have to adapt to yeah, whatever. Once, once you know one package, it's not that hard. No, it really isn't. It's yeah. a lot like learning programming languages, right? Like yeah. once you understand like the object-oriented approach, you sort of learn syntax. Except C++, yeah. that I mean that one still takes a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Getting the basic yeah. principles don't change. Yeah. yeah. But about this view call, you said that the that the view that the actual mesh had nothing to do with the simulation, right? Yeah. So it's just that the setup, the skeleton part, and everything. Yeah. Do you think it would be wouldn't it be much better to have that part also in Unreal? Some kind of like, okay, I want my suspensions this wide and everything. This yeah, some sort of way that you could uh, you know offset some of the actual. Yeah, that would probably be useful. Since you're not making a mesh anyway, it would be really cool to have like a vehicle the designer in yeah, Unreal. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I it's mostly uh, the only thing that uh, differs from, say, my initial design to the one that ended up as the, the template uh, is mostly size. Okay. My uh, original design was very small. It was mm. like a go kart. So it uh, handled in a very really intense, tight. crazy way, yeah. right? Uh, but then it was decided that it uh, had to be made bigger uh, to suit the standard blue guy mm. a bit better, right? So it uh, <coughs> would make sense. But but the interesting thing there is that uh, the rig doesn't change, of course. Uh, so uh, what you have is a uh, number of points that are interesting for the the basic suspension setup, and you could theoretically have some sort of yeah, like a chassis builder or yeah. something uh, yeah. that would just parameterize those. Some important. of the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 little bits of sure. information. Yeah. Um, so because, uh, well, the suspension um, as it is, is is usually doesn't change that much. Right. We, we have a few different solutions. It's the same on real vehicles, of course. Yeah. A few, yeah. I don't remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few different solutions, and, and they stay the same since ages. So, of course, you can parameterize that and have yeah. a, a non-mesh template. You just set your measurements and then bring in the... It'd be really interesting to see. So, what are you working on next? <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, parameterized <laughs> uh, <or> Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. No, really. On that note, though, what, what do you what do you got in the pipe right now? What, I mean, you I saw you had clicker ops with. Uh, um, yeah, with right now. Uh, yeah. So now I'm sort of cleaning up. Uh, I wanted to make at least one polished game at some point yeah. in my life. <laughs> 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 uh, so, <laughs> so um, when doing the November game jam, um, clicker ops. Uh, I noticed, I sort of liked the, the gameplay ideas that uh, that I got into it, but everything looks terrible, of course, but, uh, but it well plays. You mean, you mean is what, 72 hours isn't enough for you to get a nice exactly. I mean, art style? How hard can it be to yeah. make something look good yeah. in 72 Cause hours? Because uh, art is <laughs> what takes the least amount of time, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly. never, that's never what, content's not the thing you need mm, at the no, end of your no, game. No, 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 no. That, that's <laughs> like... Do that between breakfast and lunch, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then it's cold. Uh, uh, but anyway, so I'm working on a on a polished version of, of Clicker Ops, and then I have my really big uh, magnum opus kind of thing, oh which yeah. is Cinomata. Uh, uh, but Say that, that again, Cinomata. 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 I don't know how. Uh, how would you say automata? Automata. Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's one of those big projects, and uh, I, uh, since I work alone, I, I can't really work with other people, so don't even ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I <laughs> um, things take a lot of time, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's a game idea I've been sort of noodling about with since 2007, something. So my documentation has grown yeah. to, well, epic proportions. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer sustainable for a one man to uh, accomplish. Well, I, I refuse to give up. Oh, okay. So, uh, but um, I wanted to get something more like fast out of the door, like, you know, ship it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm doing the, the clicker ops. But then I'm going back to Cinemata and, and finishing that. Cool, that's I'll awesome. I'll give it five years. 
Okay. Yeah. Great. I'll, I'll, starting I'll mark my calendar. Starting now. For sure. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. So, y- I saw this come in the chat. <coughs> You're from Sweden. Yeah. And you guys are from the Netherlands. Yeah. And y'all, so y'all came all the way out here just to camp, come hang out with me and, and, and chat with you guys. That's super awesome. Yep. Um, and it's your first time in the States, right? Yeah. yeah. Mine is, yeah. How, how, do y'all, how do y'all like it so far? I mean, you came to Raleigh, so it's not, like, as Ian mentioned, it's not yeah. indicative of the entire uh, place, I think we're, we're lucky that we came to Raleigh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I you're think too. It's yeah. wonderful here. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's very green and everything is very large. <laughs> it's not just <laughs> the Coke bottles and uh, yeah. the glasses. <laughs> yeah. And green. you guys hate pedestrians, I think. Yeah, we do. Oh, I'm sure we do. We, we tried to walk, well, tried to get some food yesterday. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, we were walking left yeah, right to not <laughs> get hit by cars. It's like, yeah, there's no way to walk. Obviously, so. I had a sort of an independent but identical experience yeah. there. Yeah. Because I was taking a walk as well and yeah. couldn't get anywhere. <laughs> It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not, I mean, some areas have got a little better public transportation, you know, like, yeah, in San Francisco, New York, Chicago, mm. things like that. But a lot of these, you know, we're, we're pretty spread out here. It's just, it's interesting. We were talking about the parking lot situation earlier, you yeah. know, like, um, other studios y'all have been at, like, they're just in the middle of town, so, <laughs> and we walk through, walking through the office, there's just specific rooms, like, there would never be this much just open space yeah. in the middle, it just wouldn't happen. That's right. a complete extra game studio for, like, <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. yeah. put a whole team in there, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's super awesome. Well, we're really glad y'all came. Yeah, uh, it was fun. Came all the way out here to, to chat with us today, and I'm super excited about the work you have been doing, the work that you are doing, and, and really looking forward to see you know how things move forward. I uh, want to see what Clicker Ops is doing and uh, Gun Dwarf as well as uh, Switch, of course. So definitely keep us on the loop. Um, you know these guys are active on our forums. They're they're just kind of all over the internet, it seems. So yeah. uh, be sure to reach out and say hi to them all. Um, with that, it looks like we're coming to a close on time. Unless you guys have anything else you want to mention, bring up before we head out. Hmm. Probably right after the camera turns off. <laughs> 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 All right, very well. You've got notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sounds good. Well, uh, with that, um, I guess we'll bring us to a close today. Uh, we don't have any more streams until the new year, so we're going to be out for this weekend, next week. But we will be returning on January 6th with another training stream at 3.30. Uh, Ian from the technical writing team is going to come give a... A, a live training about doing procedural rooms, like building procedural rooms inside Unreal. So that's super cool. And then on the 8th, we will re- resume this live stream and we'll be going over um, some of the 4.7 stuff. So make sure you mark your calendars and check it out. Um, with that, uh, I guess we'll be off. We will definitely see you next time. Have a wonderful holiday and uh, take care of yourselves. See ya. See ya.